Today we've got something completely different. Coming up are five of probably the weirdest smartphones you've ever seen in your entire life. And just before we get right into it, you probably know we are working so hard to try and hit 1 million subscribers by the end of 2017, so if you could help by subscribing, that would mean so much to me. Let's get right into it. The first phone is the Changhong H2, and aside from being terribly named, it has a real ace up its sleeve. The phone packs a near-infrared spectrometer, which allows it to shine a specialized beam of light that can penetrate objects and bounce off certain molecules. And essentially, that means the smartphone is going to know what you're pointing it at. It can differentiate between sugars and fats, proteins and carbohydrates, even pills you're given over the counter. And what that means is you could use it to essentially tell if a pill you've been given is fake, or if it actually contains the ingredients it says it does. You could tell without tasting any of them which apple in your fruit bowl has the most sugar content in it. You could even, for example, use it on yourself to be able to predict your own body fat percentage. So these aren't like life-changing features, it's probably not going to be in any flagship phone next year, but it's a pretty cool thing nonetheless. The next phone derived from the word simple is the CMPO smartphone. And to be honest, it's a completely ridiculous, but at the same time intriguing idea. It's a smartphone that is less smart. So what the company has done is built a phone, and actually a pretty decent mid-range phone at that, on an Android operating system. They've then cut down all the features, including Play Store, and limited you to a very small selection of applications. But why would they do this? Well, the idea came about when the now CEO was on a hike, and he was trapped there with a feature phone. And whilst it was annoying after a bit, having moved from a smartphone to a feature phone, he soon realized that it allowed him to enjoy what was around him much more. And he decided, why not make a smartphone, which has the capabilities of an Android device, like Bluetooth, like NFC, like a really good internet browser, but at the same time one which doesn't distract you from the things and people around you. So I guess there is a certain audience who might appreciate a device like this, people who want to reconnect with lost friends and family, but at the same time, it's definitely, again, not going to be the next Galaxy S9. Interestingly enough, the phone has also managed to ditch the front camera, which isn't a mistake. The phone is focusing, as you can probably tell, on people who want to self-improve themselves. And by not having a front camera on the phone, it's trying to make people become a little bit less vain, for people to basically stop checking themselves out every 10 minutes. Number three is the Runcible. It's made by a group of ex-Apple employees, and they were basically fed up with convention. But what they decided to do probably went a little bit too far the other way. These guys decided it would be a great idea to design a circular smartphone. So this smartphone, if you turn it over, is made of Californian hardwood, and it's meant to be a fusion of tech and nature. Now, the wood is all sustainably sourced, and the company is very proud of how they've done less damage than they've repaired. But does it make sense as a phone? Well, to be honest, as soon as this phone hit Indiegogo, fan funding flew through the roof. Having said that, pretty much a couple of weeks after release date, people started to realize it doesn't really make much sense. Because essentially, they've crammed a 2.5 inch circular display onto the phone, which is still impossible to use with one hand. Also, considering it's a $500 smartphone, it has some pretty meager specifications. We've got one, I repeat, one gigabyte of RAM, and the Snapdragon 410, which is a CPU from 2015, and only a mid-range one at that. The fourth one is the Cat S60, which is again an incredibly niche kind of smartphone, because located just above the rear camera is a thermal imaging sensor. And to be honest, that's a technology that we don't really see under many tech products less than a thousand pounds, so seeing it on a smartphone that cost half of that was kind of impressive. It also did its job pretty well. The phone was praised quite highly for being able to detect the temperature of every object within a couple of degrees of accuracy. Why would you want that? Well, for example, if you're going out hiking, it allows you to see the outline of animals in the dark. You could detect how hot your tea is before you touch it. You could check how hot your stove is when you're baking. You can even actually figure out where you have blockages in your pipes. However, cool as the technology is, the average consumer clearly doesn't need it. For an industrial worker, someone who works in plumbing and all these sorts of things on a regular basis could be the perfect device because it's also rugged, splash-proof and drop-proof. But as you probably guessed, it wasn't a commercial success. Rolling in at number five, we've got the Acumen Hollow Phone. Again, terribly named device, but it's actually an impressive phone in quite a lot of ways. You'll notice straight away when you glance at the spec sheet, this is a really media-focused device. It's got 128 gigabytes of internal storage with room for micro SD cards as well. It's got a large 3,500 mAh battery and a seven inch display, which is almost unheard of. But the really important thing, the real thing that makes this such a unique phone is this giant bump at the back of it, which houses an inbuilt projector. And surprisingly, considering its size, this is an HD projector. It's got a resolution of 720p, 
The only problem is the bulb, as you imagine, is absolutely tiny. So it's only capable of producing a light output of 35 lumens. So unless you're in absolute optimum conditions, more or less pitch black to be honest, you're not going to be able to see very much at all. What is cool though, and something I would like to see on more smartphones in the future, is it runs an Intel Atom processor, and that allows it to dual boot both Android and Windows 10. So that's the list of smartphones. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and as we said earlier, it would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel. With that being said, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.